Welcome to Public Health IT. This will be a lecture on epidemiological databases and registries. This is Lecture A. The learning objectives for the epidemiological databases and registries unit are number one, identify the functions and key issues of epidemiology compared to clinical practice. Number two, define and distinguish among the components that make up epidemiology. Number three, identify the difference between environmental and mechanistic causes of diseases. Number four, Describe the components of epidemiological reasoning. Number five, list the different types of epidemiology. Number six, define clinical epidemiology and its relationship with evidence-based practice. Number seven, explain the current applications of epidemiology and how the results influence evidence-based practice. Number eight, Identify different sources of epidemiological databases and how information is updated and exchanged with clinical entities. Number nine, describe the purpose of a registry, the types of information contained within public health registries, and how this information can be used. Number 10, identify the defining characteristics of epidemiological registries. Number 11, Identify different entities that operate registries and how information from clinical practice gets imported into these registries. And 12. Identify security and access issues in the information exchange between communities, clinical institutions, public health departments, and federal agencies involved in public health prevention and control. First, we're going to define epidemiology. In order to understand what information tools are used in public health, we must first understand what epidemiology is and its relationship to the other systems within healthcare. Epidemiology is the scientific study of the frequency, distribution, and potential causes of disease. Studies focused on the spread of disease within human populations require information from many different sources. Within the healthcare systems, this includes federal, state, and local public health agencies, as well as local health institutions. Information on the health of individuals within communities is collected and consolidated by these organizations in order to understand the bigger picture of what is going on with the population as a whole. These organizations then exchange this information with each other and also with the public. Now we need to examine the difference between epidemiology and clinical practice. Institutions that assist studies on population health include hospitals, clinics, and any healthcare workplace in which patients are being treated by medical practitioners. Epidemiology is targeted to community and population health in order to prevent disease and maintain health. Clinical practice is focused on the healthcare treatment of individual patients in order to prevent or restore health. The separation between disease prevention for populations and for individual patients enables clinical practice to focus in on the individualized care of patients. Medical practitioners within clinical healthcare specialize and focus on the treatment on individual patients which contributes to improving the effectiveness and efficiency in delivering care to individuals and also contributes to allowing public health organizations to focus on population health, divide and conquer. Clinical practice treats patients while also aiding public health agencies in developing prevention strategies to impede the spread of disease or illness. This diagram of the relationships between the different health sciences illustrates how all of these components are part of the interconnected chain of healthcare. Biological science provides research and guidance in understanding the molecular, cellular, and or genetic basis for disease. Clinical science utilizes the discoveries within biology to treat, screen, and prevent disease in patients. Epidemiology builds upon the foundation of biological discoveries in combination with the health measures of disease prevalence and incidence from clinical care in order to demonstrate the impact of disease to the overall population. Research on the provision of health services focuses on the integration of these different layers of healthcare. 
looking at such things as the impact on community health in a specific geographical location where health resources may be scarce or absent. Epidemiology is a system, providing a systematic methodology to understand the interconnected relationships between potential determinants of disease and the health of populations. These relationships can be analyzed and researched by examining the incidence and prevalence of disease within population subgroups, which then help to determine population risk for disease. By examining the components of this health system, we can study the impact that one factor has on another part of the system of population health in order to then understand what effect disease and the causes of disease have on a population. There are two different categories of disease causation, environmental and mechanistic. What are environmental causes of disease? These include influences on an individual's lifestyle, which may be behavioral, social, cultural, or a combination of these influences. Environmental causes of disease may also include exposure to drugs or toxic agents that someone may come into contact with in living their daily life. These environmental causes influence the frequency of disease within a population. What are mechanistic causes of disease? Mechanistic causes of disease are biological factors which may also influence frequency of disease. What are some examples of both categories of disease causation? An example of a potential environmental influence on disease includes the recent oil spill in the Gulf and also the downstream effects of the oil spill on the food chain for the population living within that region. An example of potential mechanistic or biological causes for disease include genetic mutations, such as the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene mutations that increase an individual's lifetime risk for developing breast, ovarian, and other cancers. In order to study the different causes of disease and their impact on population health, we use samples that are representative of the characteristics of the population that we are researching. These samples consist of patient groups that represent subsets of the population that we are looking to study. For example, if we want to understand the potential causes influencing an increase in lung cancer in men that are older than 65 years of age, we would want to examine a subset of men in that age range. We would look for patients with similar characteristics as the population that we are concerned with, using a sample that is representative of the population that we are researching to understand the influences on lung cancer, we would be able to develop a judgment or an inference between the sample and population. This sample then enables us in an epidemiological study to make observations about the patients within our sample which we can then use to begin developing research questions and hypotheses. This illustrates the use of epidemiological reasoning in research. What are the steps within the research process of epidemiology? This research process is called epidemiological reasoning because it helps us to understand how an observation leads to understanding the potential effects of what we are observing on population health. First, we start with an observation. As an example, we're going to use breast cancer in women. We may observe that there is an increase in the mortality rate of breast cancer in young women between the ages of 20 and 29 in the past five years. How did we determine that there is an increase in the mortality rate? For this example, we were able to use information reported out from federal cancer registries which allows us to determine the mortality rate for specific diseases for specific age ranges. Based on this observation that we have made using information from federal cancer registries, we then determine our research question. There are many different research questions that we could surmise based on this observation. For this example, our research question will be the following. What could be an underlying cause for an increase in mortality for young women who have died of breast cancer between the ages of 20 and 29? For this research question, we would then define a hypothesis that we could use to guide our research studies. This hypothesis needs to be one or more statements that can be tested in order to prove it false or true. Using our example, we would use the following hypothesis based on our observation and the research question we have defined. 
Our hypothesis for this research study that we will attempt to prove is the following statement. Women between the age of 20 and 29 who are diagnosed with breast cancer have a tumor that is classified as a more aggressive type of cancer than women diagnosed in the age range of 30 to 49. We need to be very specific in the definition of our hypothesis. Using this hypothesis, we would then develop a research design consisting of tests that would prove or disprove our hypothesis. In order to conduct our research study, we would use information from many different data sources, such as registries and epidemiological databases accessible to public health agencies. Using registries and epidemiological database as our information tools, we could identify individuals who are female within the age range of 20 to 49 who have been diagnosed with breast cancer within the last five years. We would need to obtain information on females of a wide age range because we want to look at not only the age range of 20 to 29, but we want to use a comparison group of individuals within the age range of 30 to 49. And that is why we expand the criteria of our data collection efforts to include females of the age range of 20 to 49 when pulling data from these information repositories. Also, we could obtain results on the pathological findings from biopsies on tumors that these women had removed. We want to examine the pathological findings to classify whether these tumors are aggressive or not. By combining all of this information, we can then test our hypothesis. If we do indeed find that from the information we've obtained that as a group, younger women in the age range of 20 to 29 are diagnosed with an increased number of aggressive tumors, we can then begin to identify strategies for prevention for this age range, as well as identify other research studies that need to be considered to understand other possible determinants for increased mortality. An epidemiological study is used to examine the statistical association between potential environmental or mechanistic causes of disease. This type of study can be used to develop prevention strategies to reduce the incidence of disease within a community. Continuing with our example from the previous slide, if we see that women within a specific age range have an increased likelihood of being diagnosed with an aggressive form of breast cancer, which then reduces their five years survival rate, we want to determine the best possible methods for increasing survival. One possible method would be to introduce new screening guidelines for younger women in order to increase the likelihood of identifying breast cancer at an earlier stage of progression. We can also determine that more research funding needs to be offered to potential researchers on identifying other potential environmental and mechanistic causes for breast cancer in young women. As we progress in understanding epidemiology, we begin to see how information tools in public health are important in examining issues in population health. Examining issues through epidemiological studies means applying research in different ways to solve different types of problems. Epidemiological studies come in many different forms. For now, it's good to just briefly review the various types of epidemiology that aid us in understanding population health from different perspectives. The two classic types include field-based and descriptive, whereas more modern forms include analytical, experimental, clinical, and molecular. Next, we will explore clinical epidemiology more in depth. In this lecture, we have been focused on epidemiology and how epidemiology differs from clinical practice. We have also seen that clinical practice is tied into epidemiological research. Within clinical practice, evidence-based health care is increasingly becoming the standard of care. What is evidence-based health care? Evidence-based health care consists of medical practitioners making decisions about patients' diagnoses and treatment based on the health outcomes of patients previously seen. We can begin to understand how epidemiology assists clinical practices as well. Clinical epidemiology is the study of the practice of patient care in order to collect and analyze information on what is observed in health outcomes of individual patients. For example, in a scenario where a patient comes to see his doctor due to heart disease, 
If we have determined that a certain type of intervention is saving an increased number of lives in people with similar characteristics as this patient, then that provides evidence that can be used to improve decision-making for this patient as well as future patients. This information helps us to understand the results of treatment decisions made in the past within clinical care. We can use this information to continuously seek to change and improve patient care. The evidence resulting from this analysis of patient care guides medical practitioners in making decisions on diagnostic and healthcare interventions based on individual characteristics of a patient's health issues. We can start to see the cycle of public health in which clinical practice helps to understand population health and at the same time, examining groups of patients with similar characteristics assists in the clinical practice of treating individuals as well as in improving health care for the public. Not only does the research on health outcomes and patient care provide evidence to improve the individual health status of patients, but also this research can improve the efficiency of providing patient care, thereby reducing the costs in providing patient care. In looking at the overall healthcare system, we can see that evidence-based practice consolidates research on population health, individual patient health, and health system operations. What are some of the current applications of epidemiology? And how did the results of this epidemiological research influence evidence-based clinical practice? There are many applications of epidemiology, and we've already discussed some of these in previous examples. We've talked about assessing risks and environmental exposures, as well as identifying subgroups that may be at high risk for disease. Let's examine how to measure the effectiveness of new intervention programs. We may be focused on developing new screening techniques for identifying victims of domestic violence. Victims of domestic violence are frequent patients within clinical practice, and there is potential for educating medical practitioners in screening and assisting those patients. To educate physicians, nurses, and other medical staff, as well as help patients with long-term support, there would need to be a close partnership between local support groups for victims of domestic violence with the healthcare institution, as well as with the public health agencies. This partnership between healthcare organizations would help in developing an epidemiological study to measure whether a new intervention program for victims of domestic violence is effective. In looking at mapping geographic movement of emergent disease and clinical preparation, we can see that this is both an increasingly popular modern application of epidemiology while also being the original, historic application of epidemiology. For example, when the swine flu became an epidemic in 2009, many different websites began to track and map new incidents of swine flu. This has applications for public health in many different ways because it provides emergency information to the public while also helping public health agencies to prepare for potential epidemics. Lastly, an epidemiological application includes the identification of variations among health practitioners and health services provided to local communities and patient usage of these health services. This information allows us to study potential differences in health outcomes based on variations in geographical locations where practices differ or where health resources are absent. The behaviors, mechanisms, and environmental influences on individuals are an important component in understanding populations. Epidemiology is a method of developing and testing research questions to further understand disease patterns and populations and develop effective preventive strategies. The use of information technology to link individual clinical data, genetics, mapping, and applications of health services will enhance the knowledge of population health.